Welcome to the Fast Money Hats Report. We're getting to the heart of the action as it is happening. The market's falling from one year highs with financial shares leading the drive lower. Are there any buying opportunities in this down tape? Let's get to the word on the street right now. Our Fast Money crew today, the liquidator, Joe Terranova, Greg Tricoli, a.k.a. Glide Path of Opalus, Eugene Profit of Profit Funds, and Jeff Tomahawk Tomasulo of SMB Capital joining us from the floor of the New York Stock Exchange. Let's get right to it, guys. Uh, JT, we had uh, JP Morgan knocking the cover off the ball, really setting the bar really high when it comes to fixed income commodities and currency. FIC trading. Goldman Sachs comes out. The FIC didn't live up to it. Yeah, I mean, JP Morgan, you're correct. It really set the bar high. And Goldman Sachs itself, Melissa, in the second quarter, they really set the bar high. So the third quarter was fantastic, phenomenal, but it wasn't the second quarter. I think that's why it stalled out. I still think you want to buy Goldman Sachs on a pullback because Q4 in the first quarter of 2010, it's going to look just as good. Is this the pullback, though, JT? Is this 2% pullback down to a uh, still lofty level of 188 a share? Yeah. Is that the pullback you buy on? And that's the difficult question right now. I, myself, personally, I am flat Goldman Sachs right now, and, and that's, that's the challenge right now is how far of a pullback you will actually get in the stock. Remember, as goes the market, as goes Goldman Sachs. So if we move higher, then there might not be that much of a pullback nope. in Goldman. Thomas Sula, what levels are you watching to uh, maybe pick up shares of Goldman Sachs or J.P. Morgan for that matter? They're all down across the board today. Right, right. And Joe brings up some really good points today about Goldman Sachs. Again, 185, is that's the, the short-term level I'm looking at. But again, Goldman Sachs is up 128% for the year. Now, this stock is the leader in financials, but I would like to have a bigger pullback. But on a short-term level, I'm looking at 185 right now. All right, let's talk about Citi as well. You know, Citi coming out with its earnings better than expected. Um, some of what the commentary is that came across on the credit side um, could be a key when it comes to Bank of America's earnings. Most notably, credit losses shrank, cost to cover delinquent loans uh, have come down, but consumer credit environment, that still remains challenging. Eugene Profit, how do you take this? information and use it with an eye towards Bank of America tomorrow? Well, yeah, I think the loan loss reserves were okay um, at Citi, and so I, I think I'd look at Bank of America and really expect a little bit of surprise coming from the Merrill Lynch side, because if you looked at Goldman and J.P. Morgan, um, you had some returns from um, the trading proprietary accounts, and you're going to get some of that underneath from Merrill Lynch. We got the uh, fundamental take, Tricoli, on all of these names on a technical basis, which one looks attractive? Well, uh, you know, I think Goldman on a pullback. And Melissa, 185, I think Jeff had it right. Uh, and Joe, you know, I, I'd be flat here. 185 is where the 21-day moving average line is. We were just there a few days ago within the last week. So if we return to it, there's a chance that we could break down below it. But I think we at least come back to that point, and then we have to take a fresh look. If Citibank could be a little bit of a opportunity cost play because we already hit around six, six and a half. And even on a pullback to four, I'm not sure there's that much in the stock. Really? So Dick Bove of Rokedale Securities coming on uh, CNBC today saying that stock could triple in the next year. Uh, you know, it's like a $4 stock right now. Greg, you don't see that in the cards? I, I just think that getting above six and a half, especially if the market corrects over the next four to six months, be very tough for Citi to get back above that level. All right. Time now to take our positions on Google. Trading to the downside ahead of its earnings release this afternoon. Do you buy ahead of the results? Uh, Joe Terranova. What do you make on this? I mean, the, the bar is set so high. The expectations on this stock are so high. Is it just another Goldman Sachs sort of scenario in the making? No, I don't think so. I think on, on Google, you could clearly stay long right now. And especially after watching on Executive Vision the other night, Marissa Mayer, I, I love the stock even more. But when you look at ad spending and you look at the budgets for 2010, they're going to ramp it up. They want to gain the market share, the auto names, the home names. Those names, they're going to spend. And I think Google's going to surprise in what you're going to see. They're finally going to have a PPC uh, reversal. They've had down quarters. I think now you're going to see that actually pay per click. Upside. In other Melissa, words, PPC. Go ahead, yes. Jeff. Melissa, I'm going to take the other side of this. You know, I look at this as a risk reward trade, and there's too much risk right now and not enough reward in Google, only because I'm looking at what happened to RIM. When RIM missed last week, they got knocked down 21%. When Intel beat, they only went up 3.5%. I don't want to take that 21% ripper on, go, uh, on Google if they miss a little bit or you, if they're off a little Eugene bit. Eugene Profit, let's, um, let's talk about some of the other plays um, off the Internet space. If you don't want to play in Google, you want to pay $500 something dollars a share because it's simply ca too capital intensive. What does Google earnings mean for, say, an Amazon and eBay? Are there other opportunities in this space, in your view, aside from Google? Yeah, I, I think that um, I, I like Google. We still own it here. And I, I'm right in between um, the two in terms of whether or not the earnings will come in on target tomorrow. Um, I think um, Amazon and eBay, you're going to have more growth, um, and there's a little bit more diversification 
um, especially with respect to Amazon from an execution standpoint. That being said, Google's only trading in a, in a 20, mid-20s PE, which it hasn't been at that level in quite some time. So even though you're over $500 a share, um, I think you're okay um, holding the stock here and or buying. All right, we'll see. Let's move on to the next trade here. Oil trading higher for the seventh trade session. The latest round of inventory data showed crude supplies rose less than expected. JT, I'm going to continue to give you snaps because last week you made a, a, a nice rotation into crude and it's still working today. What are you doing now? I think you stay with oil. I think oil has clearly broken out above 75 bucks. And understand in Q3, the energy equity names clearly underperformed the S&P itself. You now have this little mean reversion. I think it's okay to go in, own the oil service names. That's a play you want to have. I like oil. I like oil right now as the best asset class of anything out there. All right, and that brings us to the chart of the day. Tricoli, give us a technical take on the direction of crude here. Yeah, Melissa, I think I think Joe is on it here. Um, when you had the uh, when we posted the high up around 149 or so, and then came down to 32, the major objective of 38 percent in crude was right around this 75, 76 level. We've broken above it today, but this is a weekly chart I'm looking at, so I want to close above 76 on a Friday afternoon close. We can close above 76 by tomorrow, even though we're through that level now. Then I think it's off to the races. We can go as high as 89. My take on this, though, is as crude approaches $80 a barrel, if we're going to proceed on this path, we have to watch out about the implications in stocks. It could weigh heavy on the stock market. Okay, let's move on and get some options action in here. IBM lower by more than a percent ahead of its earnings release later this afternoon. How are options traders positioning themselves ahead of those results on the fast line? Brian Sutland, Sutland Equities, as well as an options action trader. Brian, what does the uh, options activity tell you about the move that may be priced into the stock already? Well, you know, in IBM, actually, uh, about 10 days ago, 10 trading days ago, we saw some heavy call buying activity going on in IBM, the October 125 call. People purchasing that for less than a dollar. Those calls have now tripled, almost quadrupled in value. So, and, and along with that, the stock has moved significantly higher off that 120 level. So, I think some of the option traders, you know, predicted that the earnings are going to come out and they're going to be pretty good. Um, but we've already had this move now in IBM, and for us to get a significant move higher, I think you're going to have to see those uh, earnings beat on the top line. Meaning, uh, earning estimates right now 238 a share. Probably going to need to see that be a little bit higher. Also, revenue. Um, the high estimate, $23.8 billion. I think that's the number you're going to have to look for to see the stock move significantly higher. So, Brian, you are long the stock, correct? Yes, at, I'm long at, the stock. At this point, what do you do? I mean, do you buy right? Do you sell calls knowing that you're going to collect the premium and the stock's probably not going to move too much? Yeah, that's um, that, that, that's what I'm actually looking at. That, that's, a, that's a great point. Um, you know, you could be either looking at selling a put, the 120 put in November, or doing some kind of put ratio spread on the downside out in November. Um, or if you're long the stock and you've seen this move now, uh, now it's the time to maybe sell some calls and take a little bit of profit and buy right yourself and protect yourself as right. you move down. Brian, always good to talk to you. Brian Sutlin on the Fast Line. Time now for Fast and Furious where we answer all your burning questions heading into the close today. AMD's reporting after the bell. Do you buy Joe? Absolutely not. Not until they turn a profit. GE, our mothership. Still our mothership. Reporting earnings ahead of the bell tomorrow. Do you buy Greg? I think it's met its objective, Melissa. I'm staying sideline. All right, Halliburton reporting before the bell tomorrow. Eugene, are you a buyer? It's up 30% since the second quarter report. I wouldn't be a buy here, but I do agree. If oil services are going to be a good place to be if oil's over $80 a barrel. JP Morgan pulling back, but also getting an upgrade to an outperform over at Fox Pit. Do you buy, Jeff? I think you got to be patient here and wait for $46 as your first entry. All right, going to take a break here on the Halftime Report on tonight's Fast Money. We've got your setup for Bank of America's earnings for the top-ranked analyst, Paul Miller. Up next, Google sets report after the bell today. Will investors still go gaga for this name if it does not deliver? Fast Money Halftime Report continues right after this. Dow 10,000, we hardly knew ya. Strong earnings fuel the market gains, but...